Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. When a company with a sterling history spanning decades decides to marshal its resources and countless man years of knowledge and ingenuity to make the best product it can, the results can be amazing. Sennheiser did it with the HD800 and of course also with the Orpheus. Sony had the MDR-R10 stacks, the T2 and also the SR009. Products like these show that legends can be born from efforts like this. Today, we're adding sure to that list with their new KSE 1500 sound isolating electrostatic earphone system. The fascinating story of what would come to be named the KSE 1500 was told to me by a handful of the 40 plus people at Shure who've worked on it for the past eight years. I had a chance to visit Shure to sit down with Matt Engstrom, the category director, Sean Sullivan, the product manager, Roger Grinnup, senior staff engineer, Arjun Krishnakumar, electrical engineer, and Eric Walmark, the project manager who was like the project's conductor. And the stories they told me about this product, from its origins to several bouts of nearly project ending roadblocks, to the dedication from everyone there to keep it going. Going, and that finally turned into the amazing KSE 1500, which I've been enjoying immensely for a while now. I've known some of the team at Sure for many years, especially Matt Engstrom, who goes by Sugar Fried here on HeadFi. I've known Matt since shortly after HeadFi was first founded in the early 2000s. Also, Sean Sullivan has been a close Sure contact for me for a long time. Now, these two guys have shared many product developments, prototypes, and beta test units with me openly for years. But this project, first codenamed Kelp, and then Lighthouse, and now the final product they named the Sure KSE 1500, they kept this one a secret from me until just before they were ready for me to hear it. Again, this project started around eight years ago in the Skunk Works of Schur's Skunk Works. That means in an exploratory project that was initially kept quiet even within the company. When Roger Grinnup first toyed with the possibilities of a condenser microphone engineered in reverse to function as the foundation for an electrostatic in-ear headphone experiment. It didn't take long before the project moved beyond existing microphone parts to purpose-built components. And as a full-range electrostatic in-ear system, it also necessitated the development of specialized electronics for it. The Schur team understood the promise of this project, and it was eventually presented to Schur's president and CEO, Sandy Lamantia, who upon hearing it knew his team was onto something very, very special. Eventually, Mr. Lamantia, Dr. Avi Vaidya, Schur's executive VP product development and CTO, and Chris Shivink, who is now Schur's executive VP of global operations, all of them amazingly bought in, which gave Schur's team the blessings they needed to move forward with this outlandish project. Now you have to understand how cool it is that this even happened and when it happened. They knew that this electrostatic in-ear system was going to have to be an expensive high-end product and given what it would involve, there was simply no getting around that. And this was years ago. In other words, this product was given the green light to move forward by the senior management team at a major corporation like Shure well before the premium IEM market had grown into what it is today. So that's before anyone could have known that there'd be a market for such an expensive IEM system. And coincidentally, by the time it was finally ready, now the market for the high-end IEMs had actually now come into its own. If any of you have ever taken a tour of Shure's secretive research and development facilities, most of which they understandably wouldn't let me take photos of, then you know about the fantastic and vast resources they have at their disposal. When they mobilize that at the hands of 40 plus team members along with the years necessary to get it where they wanted it, you get this. Again, this is the Shure KSE 1500. It is an electrostatic earphone system. Specifically and uniquely, it is a sound isolating electrostatic in-ear system, which I'm quite certain is a first. Now in terms of isolation, it's rated for up to 37 decibels of passive noise attenuation. Now those of you into electrostatic headphones are no doubt familiar with the Stax name. They make some of the best sounding headphones ever made. I own Stax's current flagship SR009 as well as the SR007 Mark I. Um, this is one of their newest headphones. This is the SRL700. And these are world class headphones beyond argument as far as I'm concerned. Now some of you may not have known that Stax also makes in-ear electrostats like this Stax SR002 here. Stax in-ears are very nice sounding, but in my opinion, these Stax in-ears are not at the performance level of the top flight Stax over-ears, whether in stock form like this one I have here or whether modified. Make no mistake about it though, the new Shure KSE 1500 is not more along the lines of this SR002 in terms of performance. It really is more along the lines of these headphones, the SR007 Mark I, the SR009, the new SRL. 700. The Shure KSE 1500 is in every way a world-class headphone regardless of form factor. Because the KSE 1500 is closed back and isolates so well, well, 
that presents some very unique qualities. In essence, it's kind of like listening to headphones like these inside an isolating chamber like this. And when you block out over 30 decibels of outside noise, details that are lost under the burden of typical ambient noise floors are uncovered. And when you're talking about that kind of isolation coupled with the detail retrieval and performance of high-end electrostats, you get something very unique and very, very special. So let's take a closer look at the Shure KSE 1500. First of all, for those of you not familiar with electrostatic headphones, here's a quick abbreviated description of what makes them different from what you're probably used to. Electrostatic drivers use a flat, super thin diaphragm drawn taut like a drum skin and suspended between two conductive perforated plates called statters. That super thin diaphragm has a fixed or static electric charge. The audio signal is applied across the two statters, the signal in one statter opposite in polarity to the other, so when one's pushing the diaphragm, the other's pulling, all uniformly over the diaphragm's entire surface. The diaphragm in an electrostatic driver can actually be lighter than the air it's displacing. That ultra-low mass all but eliminates stored energy, and this typically means that the driver responds to the signal, the starting and stopping of movement, very quickly and with minimum resonances. When describing great electrostatic headphones, detail retrieval and transient response are often mentioned. Well-designed electrostats can also have vanishingly low distortion. Unlike planar magnetic drivers, which can also use ultra-thin diaphragms, electrostatic diaphragms do not require a conductive trace to be placed on them, which helps minimize mass. Also, with electrostats, the drivers do not require magnets or coils. With these qualities, it should come as no surprise that Sennheiser, a company whose headphones are pretty much exclusively the moving coil dynamic type, that they would choose an electrostatic driver configuration for what many considered the best headphone ever made, even 25 years after it was released. We're talking about the legendary Orpheus. Koss also makes pretty much exclusively moving coil dynamic headphones, yet their flagship ESP950 is also electrostatic. And of course, there's Stax, the electrostatic headphone maker, making what many consider to be the other best ever headphone with their SR009, their current flagship. So, if they're so conceptually simple, and if they can be so good, why doesn't everyone use electrostatic drivers? Well, they require tremendous precision to do correctly in terms of engineering, tuning, and construction. And keep in mind how small the electrostatic drivers would have to be in the KSC 1500's small earphone earpieces. Now, obviously, with their decades of experience making high-precision microphones of all types and all sizes, sure is up to the task. Also, if you've ever seen the exploded view of their acoustic low-pass filter in the Shure SC846, you know Shure is no stranger to the ultra-high precision construction in earphones as well. One more reason electrostats are not often used for headphones is the need for specialized high-voltage amplification, typically hundreds of volts. With the KSC 1500, the bias voltage is 200 volts. We'll get to the KSC 1500's amp module in just a minute. As for its driver configuration, the KSC 1500 uses one full-range electrostatic driver per side. Shure's specifications show a frequency response of 10 Hz to 50 kHz and a maximum SPL or sound pressure level of 113 decibels. One quick detail I wanted to point out is the Shure KSC 1500's cable. This cable literally took Shure's team years to get exactly where they wanted it. If you're an electrostatic headphone enthusiast, you may have noticed something different about this cable. It's round. Now, every full-range electrostatic headphone I've ever seen up until now uses flat cables. Here we have four full-range electrostats and four sets of flat cables. And they use these flat cables for good reasons, which we won't get into here. But remember those high voltages I mentioned earlier? Now, because Shure wanted to go with a cable-up concha-type in-ear monitor, they wanted a round-profile cable. What they finally ended up with is a unique custom-designed Kevlar-reinforced cable that specifically isolates each conductor. The cable is permanently affixed to the earpieces, by the way, and it connects to the amp via a six-pin Limo connector. Now let's take a look at the amplifier portion of the KSC 1500 system. First of all, it's not just an electrostatic amplifier, it's actually also a DAC or digital analog converter. The KSC 1500's DAC accepts digital connections via USB and is also Apple M5 certified so it can directly digitally connect to modern iDevices, phones, iPads, iPods, without the camera connection kit. It's also compatible with Android devices that support USB Audio Class 2 and micro BOTG connectivity. The KSC 1500's built-in DAC supports up to 24-bit 96 kHz, including 88.2 kHz. The system also includes a built-in 4-band parametric equalizer that's easy to use. If you want super easy sound tailoring, there are also some built-in EQ presets. Flat, low boost, vocal boost, loudness, and DS if you want to remove sibilance from any recordings. The amps EQ and other settings are super easy to adjust. Simply double tap the volume knob and you're in the easy to understand, easy to use menu of options, adjustments, and settings. 
If you already have a source component that you want to use with the KSC 1500, there's an analog input via a 3.5mm mini stereo jack. Now through the analog input I've used several world class source components to feed the KSC 1500 and I'll get to those in a minute. The KSC 1500's DAC amp is charged via USB and will provide around 10 hours of operation from a full charge using the analog input and EQ bypass. When you engage the DAC and or the equalizer, battery life is around 7 hours from a full charge. For the North American market, the Shure KSC 1500 comes in this very cool storage box with this neat accessory drawer, and it comes packaged with some groovy stuff. Included with it is this very nice high quality leather amplifier case, two rubber security bands, a short 6 inch mini to mini cable and a longer 36 inch mini to mini cable, an 8 inch micro B to lightning cable and an 8 inch micro B OTG cable. Now packaging appearance and style might be a bit different in other countries, so your box may be different than this one. I should point out that the photo on this box shows a silver amp. This is a pre-production box. The KSC 1500's amp is made of black anodized aluminum. It's not silver, it's black, and it is, by the way, gorgeously constructed. As for the KSC 1500's sonic performance, well, the Shure KSC 1500 is to me, to my ears, it is simply the best sounding, most resolving in-ear headphone ever, that I've ever heard anyway. Yes, it's an electrostatic headphone system, and thankfully for me, it sounds like an exceptional electrostatic headphone setup, only it's fully closed and it isolates a lot. Now, let's revisit that, I mentioned it earlier. So it sounds like an electrostatic headphone system, a really good one, but we mentioned that isolation, rated for up to 37 decibels of isolation. Let's even round that down to 30. When you take away 30 decibels of ambient noise, of distraction, it's amazing what you lose. You lose ventilation noise, no air conditioning, no heater, you don't hear it, fan noise on your computer, phones ringing, people breathing. You lose all of that, and it takes you right into that recording. Now, I've actually been present at several Chesky recording sessions, Chesky Records recording sessions, and um, one of them is an upcoming album of bluegrass and Appalachian music. It's, I, it's an amazing album. I, it was an amazing session. And I've had headphone systems take me back to the feeling of being there. But when you have the detail of something like this, but essentially in an isolation chamber like this, um, and you take away all the world around you, it really, really puts you back in there because there's nothing to distract you. And frankly, it's an entirely unique experience that no other in-ear headphone I've used, even ones that isolate as much or more than this one, can quite put me in. And I think a lot of it just has to do with that transient detail, the speed. Um, yeah, it's, oh, now as far as tonal balance, by the way, I would call it a rich neutral sound because there's definitely a richness to it, but it's on the neutral side for sure. Treble extension is fantastic. It, it again, sounds like a good electrostatic system. I will say though, that it is a closed headphone. Yes, it vents, so there's, you'll see there's essentially two um, parts in each earpiece. The inside part is where the electrostatic drivers are and it vents to a larger volume outside of it, but that's still sealed. It's a closed headphone and it sounds like a closed headphone. Image as well for an in-ear, but it still sounds like a closed headphone. So in that, regard, I would give the advantage certainly to something like this. This is the Stax SRL 700. It's their, one of their newest headphones. Um, and compared to something like this, this image is more widely. Um, there's a little bit of airiness, especially in the high, the high treble, mid to high treble, that this one doesn't quite have that airiness with. It's still airy, but in direct comparison to this, advantage goes here. So does it sound like an electrostatic headphone system? Yes. Does it sound like a system in which you've got 30 to 37 dB of isolation? Yeah, and again, that's an entirely unique experience. Again, in the KSC 1500's amp module is a built-in DAC, and it's actually quite good. Again, it's 2496 capable, and what I love is that it's M5 certified. I don't need my camera connection kit as a result. I plug my iPhone 6 Plus into it and stream the vast lossless catalog of Tidal, I love Tidal, by the way, um, into the KSC 1500 system, and I love being able to walk around with a huge catalog of lossless music, terabytes, I guess it would have to be, probably thousands of terabytes because it's like millions of tracks, um, with a closed portable electrostatic system that sounds like a really good electrostatic system. Hello, I love saying that I can do that. Even better, I just love doing it. So that's very amazing. Now I will say though, as good as the DAC is for portable use, and it's a good DAC, um, I actually don't know what's in it, like what chips are in it or anything like that, but when I'm sitting down, I have a collection here 
currently at the HeadFi office of some pretty amazing DACs and at home as well. Uh, have the Shit Audio Yggdrasil, a multi-bit DAC, the Shit Gunier multi-bit, the Cord Hugo TT, uh, the Cord Electronics Mojo just arrived, which is an impressive little portable DAC, and it's nice to be able to use world-class DACs through the analog input of the KSE 1500 because it is a world-class headphone, a world-class electrostatic headphone, um, being able to use a world-class source component with it can really bring some serious performance out of it. Now again, as far as its tonal balance goes, its sound signature, I'd call it neutral plus. It's a rich neutrality because there is really nice richness, harmonic richness, timbral richness to this product. So I could definitely recommend its use as a monitor again. But anyways, let's talk about the parametric equalizer because it's really nice to be able to custom tailor the sound. So if you have something that you want to boost, like I was listening to Alice in Chains, the track Wood, which is probably my favorite song by Alice in Chains, and I wanted a little bit more thump. I wanted a little bit more bass down low, and I just dialed in, actually I used the preset, the bass boost preset, and it gave it the life I wanted. So that was really nice to do. And I use it with other recordings that are too rich, and I've taken the bass down a bit. So I've also used the DS setting to take away sibilance from some recordings. Alanis Morissette, some of her recordings can have quite a bit of sibilance, and I've used that to take the edge off, and some other recordings as well, anything with sibilance. So I love being able to tailor the sound. So yes, it starts off with a neutral, rich platform, um, but you can, or a sound signature, but you can take that down, take it up, do whatever you want to it to accommodate for recordings with the parametric equalizer. So that's really nice to be able to do. Now I should note, even if you're using the analog input, Anytime you're on anything but bypass, whether you're using any of the EQ presets or manually adjusting the parametric equalizer, you are taking that signal, the analog signal, and going to an ADC to get it into uh, digital realm to manipulate with the DSP and the equalizer. So the parametric equalizer is fantastic. It has no weird phasing effects. It doesn't shift the image weirdly. It just has the effect on tonal balance as you set it. Very well implemented parametric equalizer to my ears. But you are doing an analog to digital conversion so that you can use that DSP. Um, and then it has to go DAC then back out to the earphones. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, now, when I'm trying to fix a track with an equalizer, by the time I've decided to do that, it's usually because there's a problem, you know, something about the track that I feel like I have to fix that is gonna be orders of magnitude greater than any loss in transparency that you might get by employing the ADC, that extra stage um, to use the equalizer. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not really noticeable to me because I'm usually fixing a much bigger problem with it. So I really love the way they've implemented it, but I thought you should know that. By now, I'm sure it's beyond obvious. I am madly in love with the Shure KSE 1500. Why? It is a world-class electrostatic system that they engineered to fit into this, that you can take with you anywhere, that's closed. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. And in fact, since I'm trying to think, so I can't think of every single product release off the top of my head since January 2009, which is when the Sennheiser HD800 was released. But I would have to say, at least off the top of my head, this is perhaps, for me, the most significant product release since the Sennheiser HD800. It's just that good and that significant. It's an electrostatic headphone in this little thing. So anyways, that's pretty amazing. Um, what about it don't I like? What would I improve? I feel like I should think of something. Uh, the battery life is good, but it's not great. So if it could get me to Tokyo, which is 13 hours away from me, that would be great. It gets me most of the way there, but I'm trying to think of things I'd improve. Um, if it was available as a custom in-ear monitor, now that would be really cool too. Uh, it's by Sure, they don't make custom in-ear monitors that I'm aware of, so I'm not expecting it, but I just thought I would say that if it was available in a custom form, I'd order it in about a half second flat. But it's not, this is what it is, and I love it even for what it is. Uh, so let's talk about it. Audition the Sure KSE 1500 the moment you get a chance, trust me. And if you're going to the Tokyo Headphone Festival where this is gonna be launched, and by the, by the time you see this, I'll be there, um, You'd be silly, you'd be a fool not to listen to it if you're already in Tokyo. So if you're in Tokyo, find the KSE 1500 and listen to it. Look for me, I'm gonna be carrying this one around and I'll let you listen to it. I'll bring some extra tips and everything too. So anyways, that's the KSE 1500. I'm in love. So we'll see you on the forums and we'll talk to you next time.